Hi, and welcome to the fourth episode in my Essential Flame series. My name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode we're going to be looking at batch and rendering. Now, batch is Flame's node-based compositing area, and we looked at this briefly in a previous episode when we accessed it using our timeline tools. But what we're going to look at in this episode is using batch on its own, so we can actually take clips, put them into batch, do some work, and render them out. So let's have a look what batch is in the tools. Inside tools, you'll see we have our reels, which we've looked at already, and our sequences, and our media, our libraries. But at the top here, we've got our batch groups. Now this is sitting inside our desktop, so this batch group here has by default three schematic reels. We also have a batch shelf and a batch render. So let's look at what these mean. Up at the top here, I can actually hide some of the other areas that I don't need to focus on at the moment. So I'm just going to go straight to batch, and you'll see here now that all we're looking at is what's in batch. So this is our first batch group, and this will be a group of clips that we want to work on for a particular segment of our program. So that might be a, an opener, it might be a special effect that you're working on. You really decide that yourself. At the moment in the viewer, we're looking at all our reels, but if I switch here, that focuses this eye icon onto what we're currently looking at. So you can see here schematic reel one, two, and three, and these are obviously empty at the moment. So if we go to batch, you'll see that there's actually nothing inside batch at all at the moment. So how do we get clips into batch? Let's take off the filter that we've got here. So we go to back to all. We can see all of our clips now, all of the things in our reels and our sequences, our media and our libraries. And what we've got to do is drag and drop into batch the clips that we want to work with. So we can take a clip here and drop it straight onto schematic one. There's the clip there, and we can see that in batch now, ready to have effects applied to it. Now, when we work in batch independently of the timeline, the clips retain their original resolution and not the timeline resolution. There's several other ways of getting clips into batch as well. You can simply drag and drop into the schematic itself. So you see that's now populated up here. So let's just drag a third clip. And the batch shelf allows us to put clips that we might need in the composite, but we don't actually want them to be viewed. So let's just drop one into our batch shelf. You'll see there that it's populated, but we don't actually see it inside the viewer. So it's just a place to store clips. We could make a new batch group, right click on here and say new batch group. And this one could be for an opener, for example. So we've now created a new batch group drop down and you see we've got our default three schematic reels, our batch shelf and our render. So this batch group is completely separate to this batch group. So let's click back on our original batch group and there's our three clips back again. Now the shot we want to work with is going to be this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these two using control and I'm going to drag and drop them down to the bottom which will delete them. This is probably a good moment in time to save our desktop and I'm just going to press replace. So now we've got one clip into batch, we can actually start doing some effects work. So we've got all these tools in here to work with. These are in submenus down here. So anything to do with comping is in here, color ones are in here, and you can press the first letter of the tool you want to highlight it. So G for glow, for example. And at the moment, we're looking at this in a one-up view. So all we're doing is looking at the batch schematic. Now what I like to do is work with a two-up view. So if we click on here, we can say two-up, and that gives us the option to have the output here. So not only on our output monitor, but we can actually view the composite here. So if I click on the clip here, you'll then see the output here. You could actually set that up as a preset so that when you go into batch tool, it will always go to a two-up mode or a three or four-up mode. And that's in the flame preferences, in timeline effects, and here you can select 1-up, 2-up, 3-up, whatever you want. So I'm going to select 2-up. And every time we go into batch now, it will be in this 2-up mode. The view that you're looking at is determined by which view has the yellow box. So the yellow box here is showing me the result. This is the same as pressing F4. So it's the result of the composite, F4. F1 will show you your source or your front. And Escape will show you the batch schematic. Another shortcut that's useful when batch starts to become populated is for zooming in and out. So using spacebar and control, you can zoom in and out by moving up and down. You've also got the view percentage over here, and if you press control and click it, it will revert to 100%. 
If you press the home key, it takes you back to the zoom you were in. It's also worth noting that the color space that you're looking at can be adjusted as well. So on this viewport here, we can go into view and change from video to log. So we're actually seeing our footage with a log color space now. And that is not rendered into the final composition. This is just purely for viewing. So let's have a look at what we can do in batch. Click on the effects nodes and that reveals all the tools available to us. And what we're going to work with is a glow to start with. So if I can't find glow very quickly, just press a G. That highlights all the nodes that begin with G. And we can literally drag and drop this into our batch schematic now. At the moment, it's not linked to the clip. So this output screen has become inactive effectively. There's no results showing. So what we need to do is connect glow to the source clip. There are several ways of doing that, but one way is what's known as kissing. So you literally drag glow press shift at the same time and it will automatically link the nodes together. So you're literally just kissing the clip that you want to attach to. And what it's done is taken the yellow output, which is the front of this clip, and connected it to the main input of the glow. This is the front main input of glow. And depending on the effect, this point here would be green and this is a background input and this is blue, this is a matte input. So now that the glow is connected to the clip and it's currently active with this yellow ring around it, we're seeing this in our viewer. If I highlight this viewer here, so it's yellow, and press F1, we see the original clip, and F4 shows us our result. So we've started our composite, and we've got our first node on our first clip. So let's add a little bit more to this. If we find our edge detect here, what I'm going to do is drag that, and instead of kissing the source clip this time, what I'm going to do is, is press Alt and Shift, and that brings up this little hook here, so it's much easier to actually get the connections right. So what I'm going to do is attach that to the source clip and move it down here. So it's just a little bit easier. When you kiss using shift, sometimes you can attach the mats and they, sometimes the nodes go in slightly wrong position than you wanted. Uh, there's a bit of a knack to it. So by pressing alt and shift, you get the little hook coming out. So now what I've done is I've, I've got edge detect highlighted. So our results that we're looking at is the edge detect and not the glow. There's our glow, and there's our edge detect. So these two are not connected yet. And what I want to do is take the result of the edge detect and use that as a mat to feed the glow so that we only glow on the highlights that are on the edge. So instead of our full image glowing like this, we're just going to use the edges. So if I take the output of the edge detect and feed that to the mat on the glow, you can see that we're just glowing on the edges. So let's look at that in our viewer. F1 is the original source, F4 with the effect. Now this effect's a little bit subtle for me, so what I want to do is replace that with a different effect. To remove a node, simply strike through. Literally drag across the node and you'll break the node. So we can do that there as well. Or we could simply drag the edge detect down here and it's gone. So let's select a node that's going to give us a little bit more punch with our glow. So I'm going to take a matte edge I'm going to press Alt and Shift to get my node connected more easily. So we're going to use this tool to create our mat. So if I connect this to the mat of our glow, the black and white of this becomes the mat for the glow. So now only the highlight areas are glowing. So we can control how much is glowing by varying the amount of black and white contrast in this image. So if we double click it, up comes the tools that we can work with and we can really start playing around with contrast like so. But what we can't ever see is the result of the glow. We have to keep flicking back and back and back. What I want to do is see the result of the glow but work on the matte edge. So what we can do is click on the glow, right click and say set as context and then you've got 10 contexts available. So I'm going to set this as context 1. If I now click on the matte edge our viewer, highlight the viewer you want to work in, instead of being the result, could be context one. You see that now says glow. So now I can work on my matte edge using the controls available and see the result instantly. So this is a really cool way of determining which node you want to be viewing while you're working on a different node. So again, just to show you what the matte edge is actually doing, if I just remove the link there, there's the full glow. And then again, here's the glow being controlled using the matte edge tool. 
Once you're finished, don't forget that your viewer here is currently set to context one. So if you press F4, that will set you to be the final result. So currently it's showing the matte edge. There's our glow. And if we just press effects nodes now, we can have a look at one more effect that I want to show you. This is called matchbox. And if you drag and attach that to the glow, what Matchbox does is open up this area here and Matchbox is basically lots of what's called shaders that are pre-built into Flame but also users can upload their shaders to a website so you can actually download other users effects and combine them into your own projects which is really cool. So it's set into different filters here. If we press home and say scan subdirectories you'll see every single shader that you've got available and we can just take one here and say this filters crosshatch for example and there we have an effect built straight away if you want to adjust that double click on the matchbox so you can go and play with the settings there and to delete this just drag and drop it down onto the bottom of the GUI so once you're happy with your composite we need to export the file out there's two ways of doing this we have a right file node here and a render node and so the right file node if we just drag that on alt and shift to connect to our output and here's the menu for that node Basically what we're doing is telling Flame what settings we want to be set to. So at the minute it's DPX, let's change that to be 10-bit export, 25 frames a second. Here's our render range. And the file path that we want it to go to is here. So we can change that quite easily here. And let's just change to this folder here and exit. So we've now got a new directory that we're going to render the file to. And if you're working on multiple directories that you want to export to, you could save that as a user preset. So if we go back into our main bin and say user, we can drag this node, drop it onto here, and give it a preset. So I'll call this dpx 10 bit and its destination is the G drive. So you could set up a few of these with different render destinations or different resolutions, for example. All we have to do then is say render. The other way of working is to render a file to your desktop. So let's remove this and take the render node here. Alt Shift, connect to our output. Our current render destination is batch reels, batch renders, which is here. If you change the name of the render node, which you can do here, you will change the name of the media file that's created. Again, just check all your settings are correct that you want to work with and press render. And now you see we have a new clip inside our batch renders. We can have a look at that in tools as well. And there it is. And that's that composite created. So hopefully that's given you a good understanding of batch and how the nodes work together, how all the different effects come together, and how you actually export them out. So over these last four episodes, you should now have a good grounding in Flame. There's a lot of information out there on the internet if you want to go into Flame in much more detail. But I've really enjoyed playing with it, and thank you very much for listening.